Today we are going to compare the budget Sony CVE-10 against my Sony A7C Mark II. First I'm going to show you a few different shots and you have to tell me which camera is which and then we're going in deeper. I will show you each shot and how I try to bypass the limitations of the cheaper camera. So let's go. Shot 1 is a typical talking headshot here in my YouTube studio. Here we have camera A and here we have camera B. This is a setup with controlled lighting. If you're not watching on a huge high quality display, I think this one is quite difficult. And here are the results. But what if we don't have a YouTube studio? What about natural light? Shot 2 is a talking headshot in my living room using just natural light. Here is camera A. And here is camera B. Which one is which? Here are the answers. Regardless of what you chose, you have to admit that both images are pretty close, especially if you're watching on a little phone screen. So now let's start with more creative shots. Here we have camera A. And here we have camera B. Once again, here's the answer. Camera A and Camera B. I'll give you a couple more seconds. And here are the results. Here we have a silhouette shot, camera A. And camera B. Here we have the next shot, camera A and camera B. This shot is quite difficult for the cheaper camera, but we'll discuss it later. Here are the results. So how did you do? Was this difficult? Was it easy? I made an expert and watched the videos on my phone and I have to say this was quite difficult. So let's get straight in. With the first shots with the talking heads, I just wanted to show you that almost any camera can look good if there is enough light. So if you want to improve your talking headshots, focus more on your lighting, focus more on your audio instead of buying a new camera. But I believe the creative shots are a little more interesting for us. So one obvious limitation that cheaper camera like the CVE-10 have is that they only shoot in 8-bit. And without getting too technical, this causes the image to get quite noisy. So this is our expensive camera and this is exactly how I recorded the video. I only tweaked the exposure a little bit. Here's what happens if I choose to do the same with the more budget camera. You can see there is a lot of noise in the image. It's 
still not bad, it's not terrible, but if you look closely, you can see that it is struggling a bit. That's why it's important to know your camera. When you're dealing with an 8-bit camera like the CVE-10, you can just overexpose a bit and then bring the grade down. In doing this, you can hide the noise. So once again, if we compare both images, they look pretty much identical in my opinion. But not everything is sunshine and rainbows. By doing this technique, you are pretty limited by the camera. And the scene like the second one shows this well. Once again, on the more expensive camera, it was quite easy to get the shot. So this was my final shot with the cheaper camera and it was so much work to make it happen. If I underexposed, the image would be full of noise. If I overexposed, like on this example, you can see right here and right here that the lights are blown out and it doesn't look professional. So in this case, it was perfect that I was using lights that I could control. So I just dimmed both lights and I was able to make the shot work. With the more expensive camera, I pretty much just set the shot up and it was good to go. I don't know how difficult shot 3 was for you, but I think both turned out pretty well. I noticed that the more expensive camera was a bit out of focus since I use manual focus. Um, this was user error. On this shot, if you look closely on the big screen, you will see some differences, but I have to say both cameras did an amazing job. I think I could cut between both cameras and they will look just fine. This is what the shot looks straight out of camera. So I even tweaked the colors and I think the 8-bit on the CVE-10 did an amazing job. And now we have this shot. I wanted to have the window in the frame and for it not to be overexposed. Absolutely no problem for the more expensive camera. Just a clean, perfect image. And this is the one where I believe people could tell which one was which. You can see when I can't overexpose and bring the grade down, we just see noise in the frame. But quite honestly, I thought it would be worse. It's actually quite usable once again. So now the question is, why should I buy an expensive camera like the a7C2 when I can have a CVE-10? This one I bought for 450 euros used and this one I spent more than 2000 euros when I bought it new. Well, let's discuss just that. We have a couple more tests to go. So the first thing we have to discuss is low light. I like to record my videos when there is plenty of light, when I can control the light, but sometimes you're facing with a situation where that's just not possible. Let's compare both cameras at the highest ISO I would go on my A7C2, 12,800. So this is our little Sony CVE-10. Yeah, um, I mean, if you are on a pinch, I guess it could work, but here's the Sony A7C Mark II. And I believe this camera is still pretty much usable at this high of an ISO. The next point is autofocus. The Sony a7C2 has the latest Sony autofocus system. I can recall a situation where I missed focus with this camera. The CVE-10 has a good autofocus, but it's dated compared to this one. Rolling shutter. If I have something that I hate about this camera, it's the rolling shutter. For those who don't know, it's the effect that happens when you pan your camera. The a7C2 isn't the best camera in terms of rolling shutter, but the CVE-10 is probably the worst camera camera when it comes to it so yeah then there are a couple of quality of life things let's start with the sd card location on the cve 10 i need to open this up to take the sd card out i hate this the sd card on the a7c mark ii is placed in a much better location more custom buttons yeah this is a small body so it's missing some things like a wheel at the front this one has two wheels the a7c mark ii has four the improved menu system. The A7C Mark II has once again Sony's latest menu system. This one has the old one. It's not that bad when you are used to it, but once you use the newer menu system, it's a pain to use. That's one of the major reasons that I'm probably going to buy the CVE-10 Mark II when it comes out. The next point is battery life. So the CVE-10 uses those mini little batteries and they die 
almost instantly. I think this sums this up pretty nicely. I only have two batteries for my A7C2 and I can't remember when I needed the spare battery. For the CVE10 I have four batteries and I often need to recharge them if I'm on a trip. So yeah, battery life is much much better on the A7C Mark II. And finally, handling. The smaller body on this one is nice, you can pretty much toss it anywhere but it's quite difficult to hold in your hands and the a7c mark ii is definitely better in that regard so yeah quite honestly there is a massive list of stuff that the a7c mark ii can do that the cve 10 just can't but like i tried to show you with this video specs aren't everything if you're starting out please get yourself a cve 10 focus on learning the settings focus on learning the lighting the audio. At some point I'm sure you are going to get yourself a more high-end camera but by that point you are hopefully making money out of this business. So yeah I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in the Sony A7C Mark II or in the CVE10 I will leave affiliate links down in the description below. If you decide to buy through one of them I will get a little kickback and you will be helping out the channel. Definitely let me know down in the comments how many of these shots you got right. Was it difficult? Was it not? The YouTube algorithm thinks you should watch this video next and I'll see you in the next video.